Welcome to iPad Pros, the show all about using your iPad to be productive and get work done. I'm Tim Chen, host of the show. I'm really obsessed with the um, idea of flow uh, when you're working on something. For me, as a designer, it, it has to feel like uh, you're not working on the project when you're working it. So it has to flow, it has to work seamlessly and uh, uh, has to feel at home almost. Welcome back to another episode of Epic Pros. On today's episode is the UX designer of Defter Notes, a fairly new app that has a really fresh take on note taking and laying out your information on your iPad almost like a virtual tabletop or desktop. I've been testing out the app and I'm really impressed by it. So we will be doing a deep dive into all things Defter Notes in this episode. You can learn more about the app over at defternotes.com. As a reminder and a thank you to those that do financially support the podcast, you can do so over at patreon.com slash iPadPros or by subscribing in Apple Podcasts, which now has a yearly option as well. My thanks to everyone that already supports the podcast or has in the past. It really does mean a lot. With that, here's my interview all about Defter Notes. Enjoy. Welcome to the podcast, Hassan. Um, can you first kind of introduce yourself and what your role is at Defter Notes? Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Jan So, and uh, I'm a, a UX designer and researcher, and I'm the co-creator of Defter Notes app. Yeah, I design the app, basically. I, I work on the concepts and uh, about the workflows, and um, we're trying to create a new experience. Excellent. And how big is the team over there? So you're the designer, and what kind of other roles uh, does does the app uh, yeah, have? Yeah, I'm the designer, and uh, Jenna is the uh, developer, so yeah. it's just the two of us. Okay, excellent, yeah. And then before we get into Defter Notes itself, what's your kind of relationship with the iPad? What kind of role does it serve in your own life? iPad uh, has been very interesting for me because I'm also an illustrator. I used to do illustrations for children's books. And the first generation iPad Pro with the pencil was the first iPad that I purchased. And uh, I, I've been really enjoying it with the pencil. And the pencil made a big leap for me, actually. And uh, from that experience, I uh, went on to thinking about the uh, experience of how we take, take notes on the iPad and how we um, organize our knowledge on the iPad. So it evolved into thinking about those kind of things. Uh, but it actually started from my um, personal experience from the, uh, with the iPad, with the pencil, uh, as an as a illustrator, actually. That's really cool. And what are some of your favorite apps for doing the artist type stuff, just pure illustration, just drawing? Yeah, and Procreate. Procreate, yeah. Procreate, yeah. Was the app that sold the iPad to me. Yeah, it, was, uh, it was very inspirational. It was very groundbreaking, I think. And the pencil too, um, the new on the newer iPads, has that mm-hmm. been an, a big improvement for how much you use the pencil? Some part of your daily workflow. Yeah, just uh, just being able to uh, like the the magnets uh, and being able to charge it, it has been a, a big improvement, I think. Uh, but other than that, I, I don't really see a difference. The, the pencil is just a very uh, well designed, even in the first generation. So. It's, it's still, there is no third generation of the pencil yeah. coming up. Right? So, uh, there's not more room for improvement because it's already pretty good design. Yeah, the, the pressure sensitivity is just, um, it, it feels great. And especially once they add ProMotion to the iPads, it just tracked so much better. Um, any other iPad-related things you'd like to mention before we dive into Defter Notes? Yeah, um, I was thinking about this because uh, I've been thinking about how the iPad has been evolving, actually. Uh, and um, the, like, for my, I, I'm a millennial, and the first um, uh, computers we had were um, PCs, and uh, iPad was a big leap with the gestures and the uh, pencil and the touch sensitivity and all that. Um, cool features. So I was thinking of the new generation that's coming up uh, with the, the, you know, growing up with the touch screens and uh, all the gestures. And I was thinking how uh, their relationship will be uh, with the, with this new tools, with this new gear. And do you, what do you think about this? Like, uh, do you think that the new generation 
uh, will be satisfied with the iPad, or do you think they will need to take it even further? Uh, it's it's interesting. I mean, our relationship with the computer is so much more direct with a touchscreen mm -hmm. based computer, and the fact that they're expanding it to be multiple things with um, you know these desktop uh, monitors you can hook it up to now with trackpad and keyboard, and so it can kind of morph into the computer you need it to be at the time. Yeah, I think it's a good direction, and I'll be curious to see you know another five years where it is because um, it, it still feels like it's early days for iPad. It's been a slow development cycle for them to get to this point. Defter notes um, for those that have not heard of the app, can you kind of describe what this app is? You know, what we you, kind of the design goals going into creating Defter notes. There's a lot of notes apps out there. Uh, why Defter notes versus some of the other tools out there? Some of our um, users, most of our users are actually saying that it's a new take on uh, not taking apps because I guess uh, because of some of the features that we're inter introducing and those features are um, being able to use your iPad as a virtual desktop, basically. It's not just some page based, you know, like scrolling app. You, you're able to like manipulate many files in uh, a space uh, and a different kind of note-taking. Uh, it turns into a different kind of note-taking experience. Yeah, so the way I uh, explain it to people is it's a handwritten first uh, note-taking app in with a spatial uh, organization. So you're able to uh, import all your files and um, organize your notes and uh, take handwritten notes on the iPad. Yeah, and it it really feels like you're in front of a desk, but your desk is your iPad, and you can lay out yeah. papers on that desk and kind of like set up that workspace, and you can even change into kind of different workspaces to so give a workspace um, area for um, for a different project you're working on. They're kind of laid out there, and it, it's kind of interesting. Like a desk, you might have a trash can next to your desk that you throw something into. Mm -hmm. And in your yeah, app, yeah. you literally have a place you can drag that stuff either to archive it to, to kind of your filing bin beneath your desk or the trash can next to it. And you can kind of fluidly work in this workspace to um, to as a living kind of breathing desk versus a, a document. Is that kind of fair? Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's a perfect way of describing it, I think. I, I like what you said, uh, that it feels fluid because I'm really obsessed with the um, idea of flow uh, when you're working on something. For me, as a designer, it, it has to feel like uh, you're not working on the project when you're working it. So it, it has to flow. It has to work seamlessly and uh, uh, has to feel at home almost. So the trash, uh, the archive idea was uh, one of the things we had uh, in the first prototype actually. So uh, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that. It's a, a cool feature, I think. It, it's a kind of a hidden feature, but it's one of the features that I use most. Yeah, I was playing with the app, and what's this thing on the bottom left here? Oh, I'm going to drag that out. Oh, it's a little shelf. What's <laughs> in the shelf? And there you go. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, the working title for that uh, area was the stash, uh, for stashing things away, because it's like a scrap area where you don't want to see that thing yeah. at the moment. You don't want to be bothered, but you just scrap it away, and then you get back to it later, because that, that feels natural. That feels like uh, your best space, you know? You just scrap things away when you want yeah. to clear your space. How do you find yourself using the archive aspect of that feature? And with the trash, does that disappear after a certain amount of time, or is that something you manually trigger to empty once in a while? Yeah, we made it manually to begin with. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, we will add some uh, options for uh, automatic deletion later on. Uh, the archive is uh, something I use for um, scrapping ideas, and if I uh, keep like multiple copies of something, I will keep it in the archive. Sometimes if I need to organize something later on, I'll just dump it in the archive and uh, get back to it later to organize in a, in a different space, maybe. Uh, that's how I use it. I think I, I think I use it a lot. An Apple Pencil seems to be very, not almost essential. Like it seems like you're handwriting notes and you know, what's the experience like with the pencil versus if you're just using your finger to try to, um, to manipulate everything? Yeah, it, it won't be as uh, flowy as it's supposed to be. Uh, yeah. That's for sure. Uh, 
um, the the pencil is uh, at the core of the design because it, yeah, it, it is a handwritten uh, note taking up. Apple t pencil takes it to uh, a little further because we have been uh, working on some. Uh, actually, it's a kind of a secret, but we're working on a, a engine mm -hmm. uh, that we want to we want to make it even more feeling more even more natural, like a. Uh, we, will be, we want to be able to add uh, different kinds of pens and different pen feelings and to make it even more um, writer friendly. Yeah. So we're talking to that direction. Uh, without the pencil, I don't think you will be able to experience those aspects of the app. Are there going to be settings like I'm working on a fountain pen, I want this nib to be the you know super flexy versus a rigid nib, and you can kind of like do that. In the yeah. Future? It's it, it, it's a fun project that we're working on. It's, it's still in alpha testing. It's yeah. something, uh, something we'll introduce soon. But yeah, it's a fun little project that we're working on. It's really uh, interesting to develop for the uh, for the pencil. Actually, it's for um, uh, yeah, it will be able to feel like a, a nib pen or like a fountain pen. Yeah, that was one of the goals when we started the project. So we want to take it there. That's really cool. Yeah, I was a fountain pen user in school because it was just yeah. more fun to write with those. And uh, it, yeah, it is exactly. a different note-taking experience where you can have like you press down really hard to get a thicker line and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. yeah. The app, it does let you like drag in text box and you can use the keyboard to enter stuff. And can you kind of describe kind of different things you can throw in this note and like, are you setting up a text area writing box for when you want to use the pencil to write in a certain area or you just freeform write wherever you want and then for text you kind of like drag in text boxes like how do you set up your workspaces uh how do i do it personally uh sure yeah uh i don't really use the uh, typing part uh, but when i do i use it uh like um almost like a sticky but with a title yeah uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I sometimes use it to um, hashtag stuff mm -hmm. uh, because it, it creates a visual element. Um, but other than that, I'm not really a typer on the iPad, but I uh, see some people using that. Uh, it, it's, um, it's a feature we edit because we needed to have it. Of course, yeah. we need to have type text. Uh, but uh, I, I sometimes use it for like creating... Um, um, bullet journals or that type of um, areas where I need to organize stuff. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I haven't been able to use the text box that much. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys have both a like sticky note you can drag on there as well as a text box. Is there any major differences except for the visual look of it uh, versus the functionality in there? Yes, yeah, sticky notes are essentially sticking on everything. So uh, it, it's a, a great tool for sticking on your PDFs, for example. Mm. If you're reading a PDF, it's it exactly like sting, sticking a post-it note on your, yeah. sticky, uh, on your, on your PDF. So, uh, so uh, in UX, we use a lot of sticky notes. I, I don't know if you've ever seen a UX board. We use a lot of sticky yeah. notes for brainstorming. Mm -hmm. uh, so sticky notes is something I use a lot. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I use it for organizing stuff. I use it for taking notes on stuff. I use it. I use it for um, I don't know, just color coding stuff. Yeah. <laughs> when we were um, developing the first ideas, when we were creating the uh, first prototypes, I I told Jonah that we need a sticky, uh, and he was like, "Who's gonna use that? <laughs> for, uh, where where are we going to use that ever?" But Turns out people actually use it a lot, and uh, you can also use it for, uh, I think, I guess for um, like layering stuff on yeah. top of each other, uh, and uh, they, you can play with the transparency as well, and uh, it's a great tool for creating like um, um, connected ideas mm -hmm. uh, if you if you are big on like um, the collecting like little custom type of notes. That's a feature to have yes those are all that come to mind yeah so so let's jump in the pdfs um <laughs> how does your app handle the pdfs like there's different approaches of you lay out two pdfs next to each other what kind of options do you have for working with pdfs within defter notes yeah i i, I think uh, one of the features that uh, sets us apart, sets us apart from other apps is that we are able to 
import multiple PDFs side by side. And you're able to like extract pages from one PDF and another PDF and merge them together and have them open at the same time on a on your desk space. It's I don't think it's something uh, I've seen in another app. Uh, it was a cool concept uh, because I think a lot of people are working with, uh, especially people who are doing academic work or who are doing research, who are students or teachers. They have uh, a lot of material yeah. to work with. Uh, so it's a very good way to compare your notes from different sources or if you have to have like multiple uh, versions of, an, uh, of a PDF, uh, you can import multiple versions and uh, create multiple, uh, create and uh, export multiple versions of that PDF. So that's uh, something we're supporting right now. Yeah, it's one of the features that people like most. When I talk to users and testers, they're really enjoying it. In annotations and things you do with Indefter Notes, is it easy to mm -hmm. export that PDF out if you need to share it with a colleague, or what's that process yeah. like? Yeah, it, it's, it's very easy actually. You just double tap it and you just uh, hit, ex hit export, and uh, you have to, uh, options to export this PDF or a JPEG or a PNG file. Okay. And uh, you can also export your whole space. But if you want to export just one page of a PDF, you can do that too. You can pick the pages you want to export. You can pick the whole PDF, or you can merge a PDF, uh, many PDFs in a space, and export the whole thing. Yeah, uh, there are many options there. And uh, what other file types do you see users um, putting in their workspaces? Like, is would Word documents be viewable, and you could, but you probably couldn't edit them within Defter Notes, or what? What kind of other files uh, do you see people using within the app? Uh, PDF uh, seems to be like a, a general uh, file type, so we started with that one, but we got a lot of uh, requests for uh, EPUB uh, files, mm -hmm. uh, so we are looking into that. Uh, uh, some uh, yeah, other office, office type of files would be interesting to support as well. We'll have to look into that. Actually, I'm not really technical, so I don't know. I don't want to yeah, promise anything. Right. But, uh, uh, when when we can do something, we definitely do it. So if, if we're able to do it, we will of course support that. Yeah. Type of file. And uh, yeah, images are something you can definitely throw in there now and kind of mark up and put in your workspace. Exactly. You can import uh, from Photos app directly. You can import multiple photos, actually. We just introduced that one. And uh, yeah, PDFs as well. You can uh, import any other file if you want to uh, refer to that file. So you, you can import a copy of that file and uh, keep it in your workspace next to your notes if you want to um, refer to that file. We're not able to open, for example, Word files, but you can keep that Word file file in the Defner as, as well. Yeah, so, so if you're working on that file as part of your other stuff in Defner Notes, you just tap on that, it'll open it up in Word. Has your team um, explored audio recordings and a recording within Defner Notes? Um, I know you can pro you can throw any file into it, so you could use a, a another app to record. Um, is that something you guys have looked into? Yeah. Not really, no. Okay. Uh, we haven't, <laughs> no. Uh, we haven't explored um, um, the voice files. Uh, no, unfortunately not. Uh, we've been really focusing on the handwritten aspects of it. So um, maybe later. Yeah. <laughs> later <really. laughs> yeah it's because we have all these uh, things that we need to work on. And yeah. the team, it gets really uh, busy sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, something I really love about um, you know doing the handwriting in Defter Notes is you can zoom in very, very far. Which, when I ever try to use Apple Notes to write anything, it just looks garbage because I have to write big on a slippery glass, <laughs> and it just it, I have no space to work in. But in Defter Notes, I can zoom in, and it, then I zoom out, and it looks great. Um, that that yeah. is a, a really good experience within the app. Thank you for saying that. That was one of the things that I needed most as well. Uh, because uh, I don't have great eyesight, <laughs> and I always <laughs> do things. And uh, 
yeah, I, I think being able to m move freely on the iPad is a really big deal. Like, I really like uh, to be able to zoom in and uh, rotate as well. That's one of the things I enjoy most uh, on the that you know that because like I want to keep a, a page rotated yeah. while I write. Yeah, I think they teach in a lot of schools you should rotate your page like I think it's forty five degrees or something for cursive or I forget what it yeah, is. Yeah, because exactly. that's nature. <laughs> it yeah. should be like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's one of the features I enjoy most as well. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Are there? What kind of gestures are there in the apps? Like you mentioned rotating and uh, what other kind of gestures and kind of hidden user uh, user interface things might be in there with different gestures and, and finger taps? Uh, yeah, the zoom in and the rotation is a big one. And um, hmm. yeah, the, um, I guess one of the features that uh, people find uh, hard to... Um, get used to at first is that you um, drag in stuff into your space um, that um, you don't like push a button or right yeah you don't push any buttons you you, you have to like drag stuff in into your mm -hmm. space and, uh, when you hold that item of let's say a page for a few seconds you are able to move freely uh, and you can just drag it anywhere you need to. So that's one of the gestures that um, we support. And uh, when you double tap, uh, you are able to access to the properties of that item. And um, can you explain the concept of page versus like space um, for those getting started with the app? Like, what what are the basic concepts people should know um, for like what what kind of things they can drag in and how that affects um, their workspaces? Uh, spaces is. Um, you can say that uh, when you're in your office, you have your desk space, and when you're uh, working at your home office, you have your home desk. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're, uh, I don't know, you have your dedicated um, notebooks for uh, note taking or for illustrations, for, uh, I don't know, for journaling, or you have to keep records of stuff. So each space that you create is um, basically a folder. We, the icon for a space is uh, we created as a folder, but a space is actually more than a folder because it's it it provides a infinite space for you to put your files and your papers. And so uh, it's basically basically it creates a whole new space for you uh, where you're able to dump in anything about that subject and have that space specifically for that type of work. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. So you're basically, you have more than one desk and each space is its own little desk. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And you, you can mess the spaces. For, uh, if you have, uh, for example, I mess my spaces as uh, um, chronically, mm -hmm. for example, but I also sometimes mess them depending on the subject that I'm working on because... Like I'm tackling a lot of uh, stuff about uh, some stuff about um, uh, the business side of things and the stuff about the design side of things, and I have papers to um, attend to later, and that's another space that I keep. So I have a dedicated space of each of these areas that I need to work on. So uh, each uh, space has its own, um, I say, organization yeah. uh, structure. In my mind, right. Um, so it's more than just keeping things in a file. You're able to just uh, organize them spatially, as if you're organizing it on a desk. Right, and yeah, as uh, there's rumors of larger iPads one day, this app would would just shine mm -hmm. on like a 15 inch iPad. Like <laughs> as they get larger, that'll be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, our users who have larger iPads have reports that they're learning about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the page concept. So you can drag in a space and have different desks and you can even have a desk on top of a desk and kind of have that uh, organization system. Um, mm -hmm. And then pages. Uh, what's the concept of dragging in a page? What are you dragging in with the page? Uh, you're able to create any type of page, actually. Uh, so you drag in a page and uh, you can edit that to be uh, a 4 or D5 or a US letter kind of page. So you, you can basically create 
any type of um, notebook, but uh, uh, you can create it in a layout or portrait, or you can create it in a, any color that you want. You, you can have like hexagonal uh, grid pages or like music staff pages uh, or line or gap pages. So we have that kind of um, stationary type of thing almost. Uh, but you can also use the pages almost like um, if you create like a really big like a three page, uh, you can almost use it as a canvas as well. So on this canvas, canvas you can um, add sticky notes where you create like a mind map maybe, or add um, add your files that you need to uh, refer to or. Uh, add some URL links that you want to refer to uh, and create them almost like cam canvases yeah. as well. And I love when you drag in the attachment one, it has these like icons for, oh, do you want to add a URL as an attachment or um, it, it kind of, it's a very nice tactile way of doing that. And with the URLs, how are you finding yourself using the URLs uh, within Defter? Sometimes, yeah, I have like a lot of things that are, that I need to read most of the time. And it's almost like um, keeping a um, uh, reading diary. I create pages and add some URL, at the URL of the uh, article that I need to read and uh, take notes on that uh, page. And I still have that link that I can refer to if I need to go back to that article. That's one of the ways that, that I use it. So currently you have Defter Notes as you open the app and you're just kind of in your, your workspace. And then from there you can create new spaces. And then as you dive into different spaces, the, the kind of hierarchical structure will appear at the very top. Um, have you guys mm -hmm. explored a scenario where when you open it, you get to pick your home Defter kind of experience and then you have a work experience versus just the one instance where everything is kind of linked and you know kind of somewhat related uh yeah uh, I, I guess you can do that from the you can branch from the main um vector space you can do that now as well but uh, i guess you're um uh picturing picturing something like where you have multiple instances open and maybe even have them open on something like uh a stage manager maybe have like different versions open on each yeah stage you can manager. even um just just brainstorming for future ideas you can even with focus mode have certain spaces for, yeah. for work or personal and they change depending on your focus mode um yeah, that's yeah. one of the new things for, for for this upcoming os release cycle so it's probably pretty early to to be um yeah adding it yet yeah, yeah. That, that, that's something that we'll definitely look into that, that that's the use case that's uh, i think i personally would enjoy a lot so yeah and um, one thing you do drag around as well is kind of like the input wheel, I guess you call it. Can you describe kind of this wheel and where this concept came from and kind of what you can do? Oh, yeah. Uh, we call it the, the radial menu. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's basically a toolbox, but we wanted to keep it radial because we uh, it came from... Uh, the idea of um, game design, actually, because uh, in games, uh, maybe, you, I don't know if you're familiar with, uh, with them, but in games, uh, radio menus are very common because it's really uh, easy to access yeah. tools uh, when they're radio. Uh, so we actually have an a even more pro version of this uh, radio menu, but this was the first concept, and we're still using it <laughs> because people enjoy it a lot. But we want to make this even more agile to work with. So uh, yeah, it, it's uh, I like the aesthetics of it a lot, personally. Uh, and I uh, I guess people also like it because it's really um, basic as well. Um, yeah, uh, but as we add more tools like writing tools or even more advanced selection and uh, erasing tools it will change into something uh, more advanced. Yeah, no, it's it's a nice little element and kind of like builds on the whole, you're dragging stuff around interface and, you know, your your little wheel kind of goes where you want it as well. It's out of your way. You put it where you want yeah. it. Yeah, you can tap to like minimize it 
And we recently added, uh, we will introduce a, introduce a new update soon. We recently added like a snapping feature for it to snap to the corners as well. Yeah, it get, gets out of your way, exactly. That's the whole point. But, like, you, you need to focus on your work. So you don't need to be bothered with all the colors and tools that yeah. uh, get into Where did the name Defter notes come from? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like this question. <laughs> It's actually the working. It was actually the working title of the project because that term means uh, notebook in Turkish, which is our uh, native language. But um, I we kept the name because uh, the name uh, that term name goes all the way back to ancient Greek, uh, where it means uh, where it's related to taking notes and taking records of things on tablets. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like this because it reminds me that uh, people have been taking notes for a really long time and we, we do it in just in a different way with different tools now. So it's a different tool for taking notes. <laughs> so that's why. Yeah, that's really cool. With the handwriting, something I'm curious about is um, search. Is that something that is available or on the roadmap being able to search through your various workspaces and find stuff that you've written? Uh, yeah, when it com uh, comes to search, there is um, uh, a few things to consider here because um, uh, it's a different thing to search within your handwritten notes and your text yeah. uh, notes. So when you're uh, searching something that's text-based, uh, text like um, the spaces of names or if you hashtag something, uh, that's uh, a lot easier, and uh, that's something we're working on that we'll um, add as a feature. But uh, for the handwritten notes, uh, the, uh, there, there are many frameworks that uh, people are working on. There's the Apple's uh, Vision framework, and there are like, some private uh, frameworks that are working on this. But uh, when we introduce something like handwritten, handwritten search, uh, we want to be able to support all the languages. Yeah, so, which is a, a uh, challenging problem. Everyone's handwriting is a bit different. And... Yeah, exactly. Uh, we have a lot of users from all over the world, and we don't want to do it just for English speakers. So uh, we, we want to be able to do it uh, when we have the technology to support it. So we'll, we'll, we'll start with um, uh, text search first, uh, so you'll be able to search your... Um, Spaces and your text-based hashtags. Uh, then I think we will move into uh, handwritten search later on. Excellent. Yeah, very cool. And a adding those hashtags as you do be handy. You know, where you're in a large yeah. space, you can kind of like, here's a section of the, the the space. I'm working on this kind of problem. Or yeah, exactly. And it'd be interesting to have you know color, even like color search. If a sticky note is like red. Show me all my red sticky notes in search. Like, yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah. As a way to... that's, one of the, that's one of the concepts I'm working on, actually. That's like, um, uh, hashtag this with uh, color uh, red and uh, uh, code this as a um, thing that I will search for later on. Yeah. Because kind of yeah. can you change, I think you can, can you change the color of the text you're writing in those text boxes from black to different colors? Is that... That is, uh, I thought yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you so, can yeah. you can change the uh, box color and the text color and uh, all the other properties of the text. I think we covered pretty much everything. Is there is there aspects of the app that we haven't touched on that you'd like to before we wrap it up? Um, I don't think so. I hope I was able to explain everything uh, that you asked. Yeah, the one the one thing I um was just remembering would of interest from the WWDC keynote perhaps would be in the the future would be collaboration as um a thing that could be possible with that new API that could be interesting. Hmm, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. There are really interesting things coming up in that collaboration field. I don't think we'll be um, tapping into the collaboration field just yet. Uh, we're more on the side of things for uh, personal deep work. Yeah. Uh, so that's n not an area that uh, we're really interested in right now. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll see where it goes, of course. Yeah, it's early on with, with that new 
um, technology. And <laughs> yeah, for sure. Where can people find more information about Defter Notes? We have a really cool and growing community on uh, Discord. And we're, we're on Slack as well, but the uh, Discord channel is pretty active. So you can find the links on the website, defternotes.com. That's where you can reach us. Very cool. And it's, it's, it's defternotes.com? Yeah, defternotes.com. So you can go to defternotes.com to learn more and there's some great tutorials and kind of like different use cases like academics. Here's kind of like how academics are using it and then um, the Discord so you can kind of connect with users and then it's available in the App Store. And it's uh, just, it is exclusive for iPad. There's no like iPhone crunch down version that uh, for viewing only, it's just iPad, right? Yeah, it's only uh, iPad only at the moment. Yeah, I can't imagine trying to, <laughs> to use it on a, uh, even a big iPhone without the Apple Pencil seems so um, important to, to what this is. Yeah. And uh, we want to be able to make it available for iPad for, um, uh, for iPhone for um, read only. Maybe. Yeah. Because that would be handy, and you could even have some kind of like, you know, on different spaces, you give a, a view of, you know, making it easy mm-hmm. to go through the PDFs that are in there and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something we're looking into, actually. Because, uh, yeah, a lot of people are requesting it, um, and I, I can see why it, it will be handy. Yeah, and the app is a good iPad citizen with size classes, so you can shrink it down to a really small window that'd be hard to work in, but you can do it and bring it up, and it works great in the new stage manager. I've been testing it out, so it works yeah, even on nice, big, large external monitors where you can't touch it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, great. Have you been testing it on this? Uh, stage yes yeah and it, it, it does work great there um so that's oh that's thanks cool. <laughs> that's great to hear. i wasn't able to do that because i don't have a m1 uh I, unfortunately yeah no it's a very limited number of ipads apple decided <laughs> to go with for that feature uh yeah but yeah it does scale up very nice and i, I wish uh external monitors could be touch screens as well but they're not <laughs> but um yeah, yeah. but it yeah, but yeah, it's a good iPad citizen for all that kind of good stuff. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. It's been, it's been great chatting with you and learning more about uh, this awesome, fairly new app. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for taking the time. It's been great chatting with you. Well, that's my interview with Downsa. My thanks to her for her time recording this interview, and my thanks to you for your time and attention tuning in. Learn more about Defter Notes over www.defternotes.com. You can support the podcast over patreon.com slash iPadPros or by subscribing in Apple Podcasts. And if you haven't left a review in Apple Podcasts, now would be a great time to head over and do just that. With that, I'll talk to everyone again real soon.